You're listening to the Sales Success Stories podcast, where we deconstruct world-class sales performers to provide insights and strategies to help you improve. To learn more, visit us at top1.fm. Here's your host, Scott Ingram. On this special bonus episode of the Sales Success Stories podcast, my guest is Steve Woods, co-founder and CTO at Nudge.ai. Thanks for joining me today, Steve. It's great to be here, Scott. Thank you. Now, we're doing this episode because it's been Nudge that has made this show possible from day one, and I wanted to thank them by bringing Steve onto the show to help me better articulate the value of Nudge to sales professionals and to dig a little deeper into their backstory and vision, which is pretty interesting. So, Steve, why don't we just start with what is Nudge? Actually, before we do that, let's invite our listeners to get access to their own free account. Maybe they can follow along, and you can get your new Chrome extension, or you can get the new Chrome extension by going to top1.fm forward slash nc as in nudge chrome top1.fm forward slash nc so steve what is nudge fantastic it's an ai platform that helps sales professionals get into the accounts they need to get into it's very simply we understand your network we understand your team's network we look at actual relationships not just connections and we help you get into those accounts and and see the accounts that you need to access and the accounts that you're farming um, that maybe uh, have an opportunity for upsell or there's a, a risk of attrition there. Excellent. And just like we do with our regular episodes, we're going to try and front load the value here a little bit. Um, And I'm going to ask, what are the top three ways that you're seeing sales professionals get the most value out of nudge? Sure. So, so I'd say that the first is that understanding that that visibility into the graph of connections and the graph of strength that that layers on top of connections to really understand who knows who that's sort of the the core part of selling is that is that human connection so that's that's kind of point 1 yeah and for me i mean that fixes one of the major issues that i have with linkedin which is just because somebody's connected to somebody else it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a relationship so the fact that you're able to really understand the 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 strength of those relationships based on activities is really huge. Absolutely. Yeah, that that sort of the success of LinkedIn has almost been its downfall in the sense that everyone's got thousands of connections and so many of them you you met at a conference 8 years ago and yeah, you wouldn't recognize each other at all. It's understanding where there's a real relationship is is huge for that. Um so so that's sort of the point point 1 that we do. Point 2 that I'd add is really seeing trigger events on your your target accounts and your customer list based on what you care about and what your organization can can sell a solution into you define what's interesting right mergers executive changes awards um, you know transitions and new initiatives and the AI research just pops those up for you and says hey there's a trigger event happening you need to get into this conversation because this happened 12 hours ago you should be on it right now. And that's really the ultimate form of personalization. I mean, I love LinkedIn, but telling me that somebody is having a work anniversary is so irrelevant. <laughs> and and the insights that I get from Nudge, I mean, those are the ones that are timely. It's it's when somebody is mentioned in an article or got a promotion or, or has something else that's really significant that generates a real reason to, to reach out that's not, oh, congratulations on your fourth work anniversary that doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, I think it it really the thing that I'm excited about is it it really enables the sales professionals out there to to do what they've always dreamed of doing, which is professional selling, you know, turning that trigger event into a conversation and and seeing the prospects eyes light up as you say, you know, if you think about your world in this way, here's how we can help in this in this deeply profound um opportunity that you didn't think about. That's professional selling. It's it's not, you know, hammering the phones and leaving voicemails. It's having conversations with prospects to say, we can help you. We can move you into the future. And I love the fact that we're able to to create more of those conversations for for sales professionals. It's it's so much fun. Yeah. Love love that. So what's point three? So I think point three for us really is is sort of the long game where If you look at anyone who's been in the profession of sales for a while, the the top performers are the ones that have that broad and deep network. They they have spent a long time building it and growing it and giving into it with this 
long-term anticipation that if you build a broad network, it will come to fruition later through opportunities. You can't necessarily close those this quarter, but if you keep in touch, if you keep adding value, if you keep top of mind, you will achieve that success. So allowing Nudge to keep an eye on that network and prioritize who's important and, and show you what you should be doing to keep in touch and stay on top of those connections and, and add value gives you the the tools to build that broad and deep network that that is a it's a life changing thing. It it changes your sales results, it changes your career results, it say, changes your personal satisfaction. It it fundamentally changes your ability to grow as a human over the long term. And and that for me is the the third point, just allowing people to become the professional that they wanted to become through building a, a broad and deep network. Yeah. And well, and that's why we're here. I mean, we connected through our time together at Eloqua and it, it kind of helps it to to give that backstory uh, that we worked together while we, you were there. Obviously, you spent a lot more time at Eloqua than I did as the co-founder and worked your way all the way through the IPO and subsequent acquisition by Oracle and and even the other sponsor of of the show and Fluidive. Uh, who hosts our sales success community, those relationships have come through, uh, again, just a career of uh, of those types of relationships. And, and finally, the other thing I, I really like about Nudge in helping you maintain that is that, true to the name, I get a nudge when, uh, when you guys see that one of my relationships is weakening. And, and so, hey, there's an opportunity to go, hey, don't drop that ball. This is an important person uh, in, in the network, and now's a good time to follow up. Yeah, I think... You know, if you if you chat with anyone about a network, you you see that trend, right? It's it's built over years, and and that often means it's built over many jobs, and and that that trick where you are going to be changing jobs, and the person that you're building a relationship with is going to be changing jobs, really adds this interesting dynamic to it, which you know the the world of CRM and organization specific tools are, are never going to be able to solve because they don't have that broad lens on a career. They have a lens on a corporate entity. And and so you've got to think about networking from a from a career perspective and, and assume that these relationships will span across uh, across multiple jobs and, and those are often the best ones. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and this is a thing that you own, right? It's not something that is stuck in Salesforce. And as soon as you leave that company, you no longer have access to any of that great data that you spent years probably collecting. Yeah. A relationship is, it's not a data point, right? You, you could delete all, um, digital knowledge of another person, but if you have that longstanding relationship, you bump into each other at a conference, the relationship is still there. The recognition, the history, the trust, the the good feelings, they're still there. It's it's not a data thing. You know, we help you stay on top of it and build it, but but it's you that owns that relationship as a as a human. Yeah, love it. So Steve, can you talk through what was the genesis of Nudge? I mean, how how did this idea start? Sure. So, I mean, as you mentioned, you know, a long history in the marketing world, Paul Tashima, my co-founder and I, um, founding team at Eloqua and, and really sort of grew that in the marketing space. And so we spent a lot of time in the revenue world, but on the marketing side of the fence. And and so you'd see this transition in marketing as marketing began to, you know, really become more revenue driven and process prospects and turn them into MQLs and hand them over to sales and, and you know, great transition for marketing. Wonderful. But you'd notice that the lion's share of the impact on whether a deal actually happened was the ability of a salesperson to either have or develop a relationship with, with that team. And that really wasn't being tackled. Salespeople understood it intuitively. CRM obviously wasn't able to tackle that. LinkedIn had a connection graph, but no relationships. And, and so we saw that there was this, there was this gap in the marketplace to say relationships matter in getting these deals done. There's an opportunity to tackle this really interesting problem around how relationships are built and managed and grown. And it's got massive material impact on the ability of an organization to drive its revenue funnel more so even than than the marketing world did. And and both Paul and I, you know, saw this opportunity and, and sort of noodled around a little bit. 
um, and, and just decided, you know, this was a huge opportunity for us to, to dive in, tackle and, and go deep on. And, and we're having a lot of fun with it. So, Steve, I find it so interesting that you and really your counterpart, John Miller, who is the co-founder at Marketo, and for those who don't know Marketo and, and know kind of this marketing automation space, it was really Eloqua and Marketo were the were the big dogs and kind of the originators of marketing automation. And there's obviously been a huge proliferation since then. But interesting, John has started his own company called Engageo and has really gone in the, that exact same direction. They're, they're creating a tool set uh, to help salespeople with, with kind of account-based selling, account-based marketing types of initiatives. So I, I find it fascinating that both of you went from this very focused on marketing side of the fence. And as you saw that evolve, saw this, this opportunity on the sales side. Absolutely. And, and, and I love what the Engage Your team and, and John are doing over there. Um, I, I think, you know, you, you sort of, you grow up in the world of marketing, marketing automation, and, you know, we, we both took our respective companies and, and, and went, you know, as hard as we could with them. And at a certain point, you, you're sort of, you're kind of bound by the world that you're in, right? Marketing automation really works off of a contact, which is fundamentally for both of us was an email address. And it ties tightly to the world of, of the, the CRM, you know, company specific view of the world, which is, which is great. Um, but I think both of us made this realization that that's not tackling the way that you get into more complex organizations where, you know, John's gone down a, a really interesting orchestration path to run these fascinatingly involved campaigns to, to get into an account. And, and we've gone down the relationship path to say, okay, you, you've got to understand who knows who, who knows who a little bit, who knows who really well, and how you build those relationships. And, and I think, you know, we keep bumping into each other at the, at the same um, events and conferences. And it's a, you know, we're, we're tackling a similar lens on the world, but with very different solutions and, and, you know, refreshingly, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of overlap, which is, which is good. Cause I know John's a, a ferocious competitor as he was at Marketo. So glad to see that we're cooperating rather than competing this time around. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Totally fun to watch. And so where, where are things today? Where are you in your journey with Nudge? Sure. No, um, we, launched a, an individual product for people that care about their network about a year ago. And then beginning of this year, we launched our commercial product for teams selling into accounts. So um, we, we've got that core base of the the data model, the ingestion of what's going on in the world, you know, 80,000 content sources a day pulled in and, and all of the machine learning on top of that to figure out what's going on and, and whether it's a trigger event or not. So that is now being um, played against the team that is selling into the set of target accounts. Um, and so we're, we're taking that out to market now and really having a, a fun time helping people, you know, transition their thinking from activity-based selling into those accounts to a, a much more thoughtful um, trigger event-based relationship-oriented sales process. Awesome. And what's what's the vision? I mean, I know you have big dreams. Where do you see Nudge in in three to five years from now? To me, a lot of it really is is bringing the the sales profession back to where it where it ideally um, could be, which is professional salespeople having deep knowledge of their customers and their own solutions and having those magical conversations where you you turn the lights on at a at a prospect and and allow them to see the world a little differently and and when they're seeing the world a little differently they're seeing it and how it could be with your solution enabled at their organization that that to me is sales that is amazing for the seller and it's amazing for the buyer because it adds value to both. And I think our challenge as a, as a sales profession uh, writ large is that so much of sales has just been grunt work research and, and pounding on the phones, trying to open up a crack in any organization and, and get in and not enough time spent having those magical transformative conversations. So, so to me, you know, if we can come at that by understanding the relationships, seeing the trigger events and, and starting the right conversations, we can, we can really transform both the experience of the buyers who generally don't love salespeople and the experience of salespeople who generally don't like the grunt work of, of just pounding away at activities. 
uh, that's a fantastic vision. I, I love it. And you've, you hinted at this a little bit. I mean, you guys have shifted into really focusing on AI in your solution. I'm curious more broadly how you see AI impacting the sales profession over the next few years. For sure. I, I think, you know, AI is one of those interesting things where uh, it, it, it means 10 different things to 10 different people. To, to me, AI is a set of technologies that are really good at recognizing patterns and really good at doing that at massive scale. So to me, it's, it's about understanding the tasks that any individual does on a day-to-day -day basis and seeing which of those are repetitive patterns. And, you know, for us, identifying trigger events on the target accounts that you're going after, that is a boring, repetitive pattern. You get up at 6 a.m. every day, you scour the news, you read a bunch of stuff, you look at what your target accounts are doing, you do Google search after Google search, you know, you're reading and looking for a few particular insights that you can then turn into a conversation. That's a pattern. We can do that with AI. And I think... AI in general in the sales profession is going to do a good job of recognizing those patterns. You know, you've got things where you are using AI to analyze all of the outbound um, voicemails, conversations, emails, and look for patterns of what works and what doesn't work and then guide the the underperforming reps to to follow the patterns that are working for the, the top performing reps. But But to me, AI comes down to patterns. Anywhere in sales where there's something that is repetitive and defines a pattern, there's an opportunity for AI to say, hey, I can make that world a little bit easier. I can make that repetitive task be something that is done for you and you can focus on being more and more professional as a salesperson. Yeah, what, what I hear you saying, I think that there's been a lot of hand-wringing hand lately about, well, you know, sales is going to be replaced uh, by the by the robots. But I think what you're saying is it's really much more of an augmentation. It's creating opportunities where the sales professional is focused and spending much more of their time on the high value activities. They're building those relationships. They're having great conversations. They're they're engaging in meaningful ways uh, with their clients and prospects and and not so much just buried in uh, the the mundane, whether it be research or beating their head against the wall trying to open up a, a new opportunity. Absolutely. I, I don't think sales is going to be replaced by the robots. I think sales is going to be professionalized by the robots. And, and the salespeople who think that way, who think about changing the perspective of a buyer, who think about engaging in those magical conversations where you see the, the light bulbs turn on, those are the salespeople who are going to thrive because they're good at the stuff that matters and is really hard for anyone but a human to do. And generally, those people don't enjoy the repetitive grunt work of pounding away at activities and doing you know, research on 100 accounts every single day. Um, having the robots do that for you is great. It focuses your effort on being a professional. It doesn't replace you. Yeah, there, there were some very, very tweetable quotes in that. So we'll make sure to put those in the in the show <laughs> notes. If you're listening to this, if you go to top1.fm, we'll, we'll make that as easy as a click to uh, to let you quote some of what Steve just said there, because I think that was <laughs> that was spot on. So, Steve, let's go back to what's possible now with your solution. So for somebody who's brand new to Nudge, and, and hopefully they they just set up their account because they went to top1.fm forward slash NC. They, they got that Chrome extension. What should they do first? So I, I think the Chrome extension is a wonderful starting point, right? You, you're a sales professional and you're about to craft an email. The, the Chrome extension will immediately pop up, research on who that person is, what they've done in social media, where they've been mentioned in the news, where their company has been mentioned in the news. And suddenly your outreach can have a point to it. It's not just, hey, I wanted to reach out and pitch my wares, or I wanted to follow up on the email that you ignored, that repeated the email you ignored before that. It allows you to tie it to a point. The next thing that gets interesting is when your network on Nudge begins to build and you can start seeing who else this person knows. So then the other piece that you get is, hey, I'm going to reach out to Sally, who's the head of marketing at, at Acme Co. And well, isn't this interesting? She's got a really strong relationship with Scott. So if I mention that, suddenly I've, I've added a social context to my reach out. 
And most of these emails that you receive, you scan quickly and then you delete, right? Oh, it's an inbound from a sales rep that's non-differentiated, delete, gone. But if I see a name that I recognize, and the human brain is so well tuned to pick out names that it recognizes, suddenly, oh, I see Scott Ingram being mentioned. This is really interesting. I am now bound by a social contract. I've got to look at this. I've got to make sure I'm not stepping on any toes in deleting this email. So your response rate suddenly picks up a little bit just by adding that social context there. And from there, you start thinking in terms of how do I attack this group of target accounts and how do I make sure I'm not dropping any balls? But honestly, it's that first start of how do I wrap a point and social context around the communications that I'm going out with? And as soon as you make that leap mentally, the rest of it comes extraordinarily easily to say, yeah, I, I just need to do this across my account base and I will be much more professional and much more effective as a salesperson. Yeah, great, great stuff. You know, one of the other things that I really love about Nudge is there's kind of a gamified element to it, or maybe that's not intended. Maybe I just see it as a game, but uh, it, you know, when I get the daily email or I look at my dashboard, it'll show me the growth of my network over time. And that it gets my attention, right? When I see that dip, I think, well, what do I need to do? I'm, I'm kind of falling behind here and, and I've really kind of racked up some pretty good strings of just consistent growth of the network. And, and it just, it's kind of a top of mind thing. And it just makes everything else easy too, because it's pointing out, hey, here's a relationship that might be weakening that maybe you want to put a little bit more uh, energy into and some, some other neat ways that you can kind of sort uh, relationships depending on how they're, how they're growing or, or weakening over time. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the interesting thing there is, I think if you talk with anyone, they'll, they'll agree that their network is critical. Right. And, and if you take a step back and say, OK, well, you know, is it going to pay back this quarter? Everyone knows, no, your, your network is a long term investment. It's not going to pay back this quarter. It's not going to close deals right now. This is in, this is effort that will come back over years. And what's been really successful about putting a metric around what your network looks like is it gives you that immediate tie. Relationships die off over time. Every day that goes past is another day that you haven't been in touch with all of the people you weren't in touch with. But unless you're tracking that, that's really hard to keep top of mind. So by putting that metric around it and saying, Scott, build your network. Every week that goes by, it's died off a little bit. Get out there, do the work, build it, and keep that line above zero. It, it gives that immediate term feedback to the growth of an asset that is very long term. And, and I think that's why people have gravitated to that because it, it allows them to objectively see what they know they need to be doing, but historically was just kind of this intuitive, I don't know, I think I've got a network. I, I guess it's kind of strong. I guess it grew this week. I don't really know. Yeah. And I think asset is the key word there, right? This really is an investment and, and the best investment approach isn't isn't lump sum. It's not, oh my God, I'm desperate. Let me call everybody I know. It's being regular and consistent and and you know dollar cost averaging in, into your network, right? Just continuing to make those small contributions over time and and then you have an estic. And I think too, that's where the that's where the research and the trigger events become useful, right? It, it's it's not necessarily okay, there's been a merger and I'm going to sell a massive deal into this organization, but somebody in your network you haven't been in touch with for a couple of years, they're a great person, you'd like to stay in touch, and something interesting just happened. They just, you know, got some fairly minor award. Being there and just saying, hey, awesome, congrats, you know, been a while, how you been, awesome job on that award, great to see you in the news. That That's huge, right? Does that turn into a deal this quarter? No, it doesn't. But it gives you this opportunity to keep that relationship alive. And you never would have noticed that unless you were able to kind of get that popped in front of you because everyone's busy and you're not going to be researching that person every day just looking for that. But it's that it's that opportunity to make a donation to that relationship bank. Well, and to continue the investment analogy, right? If if all you're taking is withdrawals from your network and you only ever reach out to people when you need something, that sucks. But you know, here's an opportunity where you get to make those deposits, and it's about them, not about you. And and then you're you're in a better position to make those withdrawals when when you need them. Absolutely, people notice it. It it uh, 
it's amazing how intuitive people are about whether whether the reach out is is honest is tied to an ask people know that right away you, you've got to be very authentic and just keep making those donations before you make the ask awesome so steve as we wrap up here i know you guys have a webinar coming up uh, can you give us the details on that Sure. So uh, on on May fourth, we're we're hosting a a webinar that's going to talk about AI solving top challenges across all modern sales teams. Uh, so it, historically, a lot of the content around AI has been kind of a little bit more focused on enabling marketing. So we're we've partnered with a bunch of CEOs of leading AI startups, People.ai, Chorus.ai, and we're going to focus in on on use cases that are sales specific. It's going to be a really interesting webinar. So definitely recommend that uh, everyone um, does that as a as a second action after signing up for the the Nudge Chrome extension because I I believe that's probably the the first best thing. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, we'll set up an easy link for that as well. I'll set it up at top1.fm forward slash NW, as in nudge webinar. So top1.fm forward slash NW. And I'll also update that link. So depending on when you're listening to this, uh, that'll either take you to the registration page or a place where you can get access to the recording if you're listening to this after May 4th. Um, you don't have to feel like you missed out. So finally, Steve, what's the best way for our listener to connect with you if they're so inclined? Sure. Uh, just reach out to me, my good old-fashioned email, steve.woods at nudge.ai. Super easy. Steve, thanks so much. This has been great. Thanks for having me, Scott. Great to chat with you. Thanks for listening to the Sales Success Stories podcast. To be sure you never miss an episode and for an invitation to our sales success community powered by Influitive, subscribe to our newsletter at top1.fm. 